students welcome to your IT class so today we are going to continue with our session 1 that is introducing databases from unit 3 that is database management system so let's start our class for today so before starting our today's class we will do a quick recap from the previous session that is our previous class so in the previous class we had gathered knowledge about database system which is basically a computer record keeping system okay and the term database refers to a collection of interrelated data okay and for managing this database for creating a database we need a software program okay an application program in a computer which is known as database management system that is dbms in short it is a program a computer program which manages a database effectively and efficiently okay then we had also gathered knowledge about certain um, limitations of a database okay that means duplication of data okay if we don't maintain a database in a dbms then we may have data redundancy that is duplication of data that is two records can have same record i mean same data all right then we had also gathered knowledge that database can control inconsistency that is data inconsistency to a large extent that means if we maintain a database okay we can man uh, we can control the data inconsistency to a large extent that means two 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 i mean one student cannot have multiple say addresses or say multiple roll numbers so this type of data can inconsistency can be controlled to a large extent if we maintain records using a database then we had also gathered knowledge that databases facilitate sharing of data that means multiple users can use the database at the same time then we had also gathered knowledge then the data the uh, database enforced standards that means uh, the database which is created by a particular organization or who owns the organize uh, the database that organization or that uh, corporation will lay out certain basic rules and regulation lay, uh, lay will lay out certain standards and which the users has to follow in order to use that particular database then a database also ensures data security so as a database facilitates sharing of data that is multiple users can use the same database so there comes the issue of data security and we need to maintain the data security and for that accordingly different users are given different authorization rights in order to access the data from the database all right so lastly we had also gathered knowledge that when all the data is stored in one file in one single file then such type of database is called as a flat database or you can say a flat file database and examples we can give as spreadsheets okay like ms excel then calc okay so these all will come under flat databases then what are relational database so when the data is stored in multiple tables okay so when we will divide the data into different multiple tables and these particular tables these multiple tables can be linked together okay linked through a, a common field then such type of database is called as a relational database or we, um, and the, uh, this relational database is managed or maintained by a software program that is rdbms that is relational database management system and example given you can see here ms sorry we have ms access base oracle so all these will be will come under examples of a relational database or a rdbms okay so these are the different topics which we have covered in the last class now let us come to know the learning outcome of today's class so in today's class we will have knowledge on first of all a base okay that is the popular rdbms of openoffice.org okay then about tables which is a component of a database or you can say it is a database object okay and from tables we will have knowledge on what is a data item okay so in general as we call it as a field name or field or you can say an attribute then what is a record and what is a table or relation then we will have knowledge on types of keys in a table so in a table we have different types of keys that is the different fields are called as different keys okay here in a database that is we have the primary key what is composite primary key alternate key candidate key and lastly the foreign key and we will have knowledge at last the difference between a what is a foreign key and a primary key so these are the learning outcome of today's class okay so let us start our class for today 
So first of all, here we have base that is the DBMS of openoffice.org. So as we know that a database is a collection of information which is related to a particular subject or a purpose. Okay, it can be for about uh, related to any particular subject or it can be for any purpose. For example, we can say we will create a student database, okay, or an event management database, etc. Now, base that is the DBMS component of openoffice.org like we have learned MS Access as in class 8. So, same way here we have base which is again a popular RDBMS that is a relational database management system that is a system that manages data in terms of special tables and these tables are called as relations all right and which will let us create a database or manage our database by offering a variety of features okay and base is also known as openoffice.org base or you can simply call it as OOO base okay and in the following we are going to discuss the function of a base so using a base that is the uh, db rdbms of openoffice.org we can manage all our information from a single zip file which will store all the related information files and the database file of base is stored with the extension with .odb that means any database you save it you create in base it will be get saved with the extension as .odb that is <coughs> please underline and which we, which which expands to open office database and within the file you will you can also divide your data into separate storage containers okay which we call it as tables and where we can view add and also at the same time update table data by using online forms we will have okay find and retrieve the data okay by using queries then analyze or print the data in a specific layout by using reports so here we have four different uh, four of uh, four features of base here so that is the tables queries forms and reports and you can say also that these are a different database objects okay of a particular database so here we have that four database objects that is first of all we have tables queries forms and reports okay so here you have the definition of table that is a table refers to a storage container storing data pertaining to a single object or subject or a for any purpose so why we create a table for maintaining data for storing data okay related to any particular subject it can be about any particular person okay like for students if we are maintaining a database for employees we can maintain a database for different products we can maintain a database okay or can be of any object subject or any purpose okay and please remember that we have four database objects that is tables queries forms and reports okay so tables we enter data in the tables okay then we create queries in order to extract data from the database okay by mm, filtering different by giving certain conditions all right then forms we can again easily view and enter data in the tables using a form okay and as we enter data in a form we will see automatically the table will also get updated and lastly the report which is used for getting a printable format okay printable layout that means for example if you want to print a table you can use a report to create the print, print <coughs> hard copy of the particular table okay so these are the four database objects of any particular database of not only base but of any particular database we have four database objects first of all tables queries forms and reports okay so this is all about your base now let us come to the tables next first database objects we have here is tables now why do we use tables so in order to store our data we can create one table for each type of information which we can track okay and to bring the data from multiple tab tables together in a query form or report we can define relationship between the tables so here why we create a table for in order to store each type of information okay so why we create a table so that we can keep each type of uh, information in that particular table so that it becomes easy for us to track and what we can do is <coughs> sorry we can bring the data that means we can combine uh, the data from different tables say for example we have two tables okay so we can combine the data from the two tables and all the field names you will see all the records from the two different tables can be uh, shown as one or can be brought together as one table in the form of a 
query okay and that same uh, particular query also you can give a i mean you can uh, print out as a report okay so here you can see we have three different tables over here the first one is the employees table okay so here you can see the employee id is taken here and you can see as in the next table you can see the name of the table is department okay so like this what you can do is in a particular table you can combine the different fields from two different tables and you can brought, bring them into one particular table in the form of a query okay so here you can see ba base can match records for multiple tables on the basis of common fields so we'll come to know what are the common fields so that we can bring the related records together in any form so for example there are two tables say employees and department and from there you can say you can take the say <coughs> department id and say employee id okay you can take from one table say employee name you can take from another table so accordingly you will have employee id department id and name all the three dif uh, different fields from two different tables and you can store them in the form of a query okay then you can see here the note it is given the definition of a table definition of a table means in a database a table is okay is called as a relation okay if we refer a table as a relation so a table in a relational database is called a relation okay so please remember then next one we have is the components of a table now in a database a table stores information for a group of things and which are known as fields and which together make up records okay so now we will have knowledge on fields and what are fields and what are records so here we have the first one here we have is the data item. So what is a data item or you can call it as a field or an attribute. So a data item is the smallest unit of name data. Okay. And it may consist of any number of bits or bytes as you store the data in it. And a data item represents one type of information and it is always referred or often referred to as a field or you can say a data element. Then we have a record. Now, what is a record? A record is a name collection of data items which will represent a complete unit of information. Now, say for example, name, say roll number, okay, say class, section, all these will be will be labeled as different data items or field, okay. Now, for example, roll number one, say name is Ram, <coughs> class is 10, say section is C, okay. So, uh, uh, roll number, name, class, section, that is uh, one, Ram, Okay, then see, so oh, all the whole information, the whole complete information will be referred to as one record. Okay, and then we know what is a table. A table is a name collection of all occurrences of a given type of logical record. And a table is called as a relation in relational databases. Okay, so as you can see here, the following figure will explain the above mentioned terms. That is the first one, field or attributes, which are the columns containing one type of information. Then records are the rows representing one complete information, okay. And then table is the group of all the logically related records. So as you can see in the next picture here, we have a table over here from base. And you can see the first field name, that is the salesman number, okay, which has got unique values. If you see carefully, each and every number sales num <coughs> salesman number has got unique value and it has got no duplicate values no same value is there okay so this type of field is called as a primary key you can see primary key field has unique value for each row and this field is termed as a primary key or can be taken as a primary key or can be selected as a primary key then next one we have first name okay Surname, salesmate, target, all these are different fields or attributes of this particular table. Alright, then you can see here Vandana, Pahua, okay. So these are the different data items, okay. So these are different data items as you are entering data in the table. And then see for example, which I have marked with the red line that is SO09 Shubhas Kumar, salesmate was 22,000, okay. Target was 20,000. Okay, so this whole complete information is called as a record. So if you can say here, so we have how many records? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So overall we have 11 records. Okay, and how many fields we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have 5 fields and 11 records in this particular table. Okay, and then requires 4 bytes. That means to store that particular surname, 
we will require four bytes in the memory of the computer and then so the particular word swami again it requires five bytes okay so this is the storage how much we will be required for to store this particular data item they are referring it to as that then you can see here in the below in a table each record is identified with a unique value that is <clears throat> in a field of table there are unique values for all records and these unique values identifies the records for instance you can see the field salesman number has unique value for all the records so here the salesman number <clears throat> has been taken as a primary key okay so please remember here so the field name the attribute wherever we will have unique values that particular field name or the attribute can be taken as a primary key okay so this is all about the components of a table now let us come to the <coughs> next topic that is the type of keys in a table now we have already read that every table in a database has a primary key and other than a primary key there can be other types of keys as well in a table now first of all let us discuss what is a primary key you have the definition of a primary key given over here as you can see please underline and mark it then what is a primary key now in a database a field which will store unique value for each record okay and hence can uniquely identify a particular row or a record then that particular field is called as a primary key so in this particular table you will find roll number name marks and admission number so from here the roll number field has been taken as the primary key okay then next one we have is the composite primary key now please see here properly what is composite primary key now sometimes a combination of field values is unique in a table okay and <clears throat> in those cases the group that group of fields or attributes makes a primary key of the table now in other words the primary key okay that consists of a combination of two or more fields or attributes is known as the composite key or the composite primary key now for example you can see in the following table we which uses two fields that is the roll number and project number to identify each tuple each tuple means each record in a particular database or in a table you can call it as a each record can be called as a tuple so this is sorry this is an example of a composite key now in this particular table if you see if you observe carefully you will find that roll number cannot be taken as a primary key field why you can see there that they have duplicate values that is there is two roll number one there is two roll number two and there is two roll number three now in such cases okay what we can do is we can combine another field okay so as you can see there project is there so what we can do we can take the field project plus roll number and then we can combine these two fields together and then we can make it as a composite primary key now here the field roll number alone cannot become the primary key as you can see because it contains duplicate values in it but along with it the value of the field that is a project okay that is roll number plus project this can become a composite primary key as this combination is unique for all rows so if we make a combination that it is one sst okay then one scpw then this will become what <coughs> this will become a unique value as you can see there are names also even same okay even you can see the teacher number also the id is same here so what we can do we can use roll number field as well as the project field together to make a composite primary key and if we combine these two we can now these two fields the values can be assigned as a unique value can be uh, can be used for uniquely identifying the student in the table now say one sst there is only one student one scpw there is only one student two sst so that is only one student so it will uniquely identify and this type of key combination is called as composite primary key okay or you can say as a composite key all right then this is all about your composite primary key now let us go to the next one next one we have is the alternate key now in a table there may be more than one field which will have unique value for each row all right and in such cases only one of them is declared as a primary key and other such field become what alternate keys okay now for example you can see in this particular table <coughs> we have two fields here which can be taken as a primary key okay which are eligible to become a primary key that is the roll number which has been already taken as a primary key which have unique values and another one we have is the admission number which again has unique values okay so there is no duplicate values now the admission number field can be taken as the 
alternate key. Okay, so please underline the keys that have the unique values for each record but are not selected as the primary key. These type of keys are called as or these type of fields are called as alternate keys. Okay, or alternative keys. The next one we have is the candidate key. Okay, so what are candidate keys? So primary keys and the alternate keys both together can be called as a candidate key. Or in other words, you can also say that all the fields or the field combinations which are eligible to become a primary key can be called as a candidate key. That means admission number can be called as a primary a candidate key. Okay, then lastly we have the foreign key. Okay, what is a foreign key and what is a primary key? Now, sometimes in a table, we have a field which is not the primary key in that table, but is a primary key in another table. Okay, as you can see in their figure, project table, and we have another one is the teacher table. Now, in the project table, you will find the roll number is taken as the <coughs> primary key there. And you can see the teacher uh, teacher number that is taken as the foreign key. Now, you can see in the first table, teacher table, primary key has been taken in the, as the teacher number. So, in the project table, the primary key is the roll number and the teacher number field is not the primary key, but the same field teacher number is the primary key in another table that is in the teacher table. Now, teacher number in the project table will be called as the foreign key, okay? So, as it refers to another table's primary key. So, this teacher number in the first table that is in the project number which has not taken as a primary key, but it has it is the primary key of another table so the teacher number in the first table will be referred to as the foreign key okay so in the projects table you can see shown above the field roll number is the primary key and the teacher number field is not the primary key but the same field teacher number is the primary key in another table that is the teacher table okay so teacher number field is the, in the projects table will be called as the foreign key as it refers to another table's primary key and a table which contains a foreign key is called the child table okay or you can say a dependent table please underline and key and the table which contains the foreign key link primary key is called as the parent table so as per the above example the project table is the child table or you can say a dependent table of the teacher's table is the parent's table so the teacher's table is the main table that is the parent's table and the project's table is the child table of the parent table teacher okay then please underline here that a non-primary key field attribute in a table is called as a foreign key if it is a primary key in another table okay then lastly we have the difference between the foreign key and the primary key okay now what is a primary key a uh, sorry foreign key a foreign key is linked to a primary key but is different from a primary key okay so what it is so first of all a foreign key is a field or a group of fields in a relational database that provides an association between data in two tables okay whereas on the other hand a special relational database table field or combination of multiple fields okay a composite primary key that allows to uniquely identify all table records that is called as a primary key and please remember that a table can have multiple foreign keys but a table can only have one primary key there cannot be more than one primary key in a table okay in a particular database okay so this is all up to here today's class now let us summarize the topics which we have covered today so in today's class first of all we had gathered knowledge about base which is the popular rdbms of openoffice.org and it offers many features or you can see database objects like tables forms queries and reports in order to manage data then we had also gathered knowledge about <coughs> table okay which refers to a storage container okay for storing data perta pertaining to a single object subject or for any purpose <coughs> then we had also gathered knowledge about a primary key which is a field and which is used for uniquely identifying each record in a table then we had also gathered knowledge that the primary key okay that consists of a combination of two or more fields or attributes okay is known as a composite key or you can call them as a composite primary key then the unique the keys okay which have the unique values for each record but are not selected as primary key then you can call them as an alternate key or alternative keys and primary keys and both the alternate keys together can be called as a candidate key okay 
and then we had also gathered knowledge about foreign key that is in a table <coughs> if we have a field which is not the primary key in that table but is a primary key in another table then that particular key can be called as a foreign key that field can be called as a foreign key and a table can have multiple foreign keys but there can be only one primary key in a table okay so these are the different topics which you have covered today thank you everyone so after this video i have some home assignment for you in google classroom please check and at the same time i'll be uh, giving you the exit card link which you are going to click and submit and at the same time please learn keep learning thank you have a nice day